it looks like we're just about all back. We have a couple more rooms that are still finishing up. Okay, it looks like we are all back. Tiffany, are you back? I am, thank you, uh, Susan. And Susan, let's give it a go. If you would try unsharing your screen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try okay. to share now, if that's okay. Yes. All right. Let's see if this will work out in our favor. And if not, <laughs> uh, we'll go back to our, our trusty um, mechanism with Susan there. Great. Not share, present. There we go. So we wanted to just uh, take a moment quickly to have each group group's reporter maybe share one thing that your group noticed about the document or documents that you looked at and how you believe those documents uh, might be helpful. Or one thing you noticed when you look when looking at those uh, documents in the standards uh, shifts that were available to you. So if we could, can we start, um, we, we usually go in order, so I'm going to throw folks off a little bit here. Uh, if we could start with our chemistry, physics, and physical science group, and can the reporter from that group please unmute and share one thing that you felt, uh, your team felt would be helpful with these documents, or one thing you noticed about the shifts in the standards at those grade bands. Hey, Tiffany, I was the recorder because we had some challenges with getting to the paper, but I recorded what they said. So um, I think one of the things is how this is going to help them. And they thought this would be a segue to examining the standards in more detail. And it would help them find the changes and know what to focus on and pay attention. Great. And I actually saw a few notes in that, in that chemistry, physical science and physics group. Uh, and, and things they notice about the standard. So thanks for sharing that out uh, with us, Donna. And I believe we have Wendy for the biology, environmental science, and earth science group. Um, maybe what's one thing you noticed about the standards that your group looked at? We didn't dive in, Tiffany, too much to the standards, but we did really um, looked at the document that showed where the changes occurred, at least as far as biology is concerned. And we did appreciate that document being there to save us um, one thing, a lot of time trying to go through and find, we don't have to go through word by word looking for changes. We appreciate the fact that that document tells us exactly what's the same, what's changed. Um, and, and that'll really be able to lead us to how we shift our instruction. Great. So I think we're going to go to the middle school group next. And I believe that's Tony, the reporter for the middle school group. Yeah, that's me. Um, we noticed that the way that the standard shifted allowed for a lot stronger storylines, and we were really excited about that. Um, but also how several standards moved but weren't mo modified greatly, and so kind of thinking about the great potential for really good vertical collaboration as we're transitioning to new standards. Great. Thank you so much, Tony. And I'm not sure who our third through fifth grade reporter is because I did not um, get a chance to go to that group. Well, it was me, but I, I messaged Jen to see if she wanted to speak on behalf of the group. But um, I, I think one of the bigger takeaways were the addition of the assessment boundaries um, for elementary and that it really helps teachers focus in on um, what they should be doing with their students. Great. And Susan, did we have anyone um, for pre-K two or did they end up attending the three five group? We did not have anyone for that group. Okay, great. All right, so thank you all so much for that. We hope the documents are useful. Um, we had some challenges with some of the documents. I think two documents in particular that we had to repair. One is repaired and the other will be repaired. Uh, but as you can imagine, in trying to share documents sometimes in a digital format, that can happen. So we'll get that uh, changed up. And I do want to point out, if you go back to the presentation um, link, right here on slide 35, magically appearing 
what seems like just a moment ago uh, was not there is a, a direct link to the documents that we were looking at. So you don't have to go back into the breakout group uh, links. You can just go to slide 35 and find a link to these documents. All right, so thank you so much for participating in, in um, taking a look at those grade level shifts through those documents that we have created. We wanna share with you just a few considerations and potentially recommendations for implementation based on some of those shifts. <laughs> All right, Susan, I'm so sorry, you're gonna have to share. I apologize. Okay. No, I got it. No As Susan's pulling that up, uh, we want to share with you the assessment timeline because we know you have a lot of questions related to that. But as I mentioned early in the session, we have, um, we have some time to implement the shifts of the standards, but there are some grade level considerations to think about as you begin to think about implementation. Uh, so just as quickly as um, she possibly can, Susan's now getting that slide deck up for us. should be there. It yeah, there we go. So the assessment timeline, as we mentioned, um, it will be 2022-2023 when the state assessment for science will be aligned to those 2020 standards. So remember that we assess in our state for science at fifth grade, eighth grade, and then at 11th grade, um, that assessment is really over the physical sciences and the life sciences. And so again, those standards will not be aligned until 2022, 2023, which means this upcoming year, 2020 and 21, uh, the assessment will be aligned to the 2014 standards. In 21, 22, it will be aligned to the 2014 standards. And again, that final year of 22, 23 is when um, we will have uh, assessments aligned to those new standards. If you have questions about assessment, you can contact our colleague uh, Samantha Shepard, who is on the line today as well. She was in our biology group. She'd be happy to answer any of your questions. I know several of the questions that are coming up are related to when the new blueprints will be available. Um, please keep in mind that that takes a little bit of time because we do some work with um, educators in the field to, to make those updates. Um, but we will get that out as soon as possible. I know our assessment office will work hard on that and we'll share that through the science newsletter uh, with folks when that is made available. But we do have a little bit of time here. All right, next. So as you're taking a look at those grade level shifts uh, through the documents that we provided, um, you, you will notice uh, just a high level glance at that grade level uh, of whether performance expectations, clarification statements, assessment boundaries, or any of the three dimensions have uh, any shifts uh, associated with them. If you took a look at the pre-K and the kindergarten uh, document, you would notice that those particular grade levels for elementary have quite a few changes. Pre-K, because we have brand new pre-K standards, they're all brand new. For kindergarten, most of the clarification statements were adjusted to be uh, more in line with the pre-K standards and being investigative play-based. However, the remainder of the elementary standards, particularly in fourth and fifth grade, you'll see minor um, changes associated with those standards. Now keep in mind the fifth grade science assessment will not be aligned until 2022-23 uh, to the new standards. But since there are few shifts associated with the fourth and fifth grade standards, um, we would, uh, say to you that it would be okay to move forward with implementing those shifts in the new standards this school year if you so choose. All right, next. The big question we get uh, about implementation and timelines for when we should implement uh, the changes in the new standards are related to that middle school grade band because of the placement changes for standards. So one of the other documents we've created here, uh, particularly for middle school, and I believe Susan uh, can go to that document um, for us, but you can click on it by going to the Google slide deck that you have available. And perhaps Donna or Heather would also provide a link in the chat box if they haven't already. And this document serves to uh, share with you, and Susan, I don't know if you can make that just a tad bit bigger, um, but this particular document will give you uh, a broad level view Thank you. And if you'll scroll up, a broad level view of how the standards placement have changed with the middle school 
uh, grade band. So here you'll see in orange, highlighted in orange, the sixth grade standards that were originally in sixth grade in 2014. And you'll see some of those are now in seventh grade and some of them in eighth grade. The seventh grade standards highlighted in, in blue are the seventh grade standards from 2000 uh, that were originally in 2014. And you can see where those have moved. Uh, you'll also notice that one standard at seventh grade, PS36, has been, uh, I'm sorry, was uh, previously named MS uh, PS35. It is the same standard or performance expectation, but the name has changed. And lastly, everything highlighted in, in the yellow uh, color would have been an eighth grade standard in 2014 and is now uh, in the grade level that you see it today. There is one new standard on the seventh grade standards. Um, and if Susan would, were to scroll down just a bit, you would see that highlighted in our orange color for new. And you'll have a total number of standards on this document as well for each of these grade levels. We get asked a lot of times why there may be more standards in a particular grade level than others. Keep in mind that one of the, the efforts the writing team made was to ensure that standards had strong connectivity within a grade level. Uh, and so, um, you know, that didn't lend itself uh, to creating sort of equal standards at each of the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade uh, levels. However, some standards in sixth grade um, encompass um, more than other, let's say, standards at eighth grade. So that does balance out in most cases. So again, we hope this document is helpful as you're thinking about planning in subsequent years for these changes at middle school. One thing to keep in mind, as we mentioned already, there will be a webinar on Thursday where we will support schools in thinking through their implementation timeline of the new standards and these shifts specifically with middle school. So you'll want to join us for that webinar as well. It will be recorded and shared um, just like this one through the science newsletter. Next slide. High school is a little bit different here. Um, again, one thing to keep in mind related to the assessment is that all sophomores and juniors will be assessed on the 2014 standards when they are juniors. All freshmen will be assessed on the 2020 standards when they are juniors. So the freshmen this year will be assessed on the new standards when they are juniors. Again, the shifts are, are, are minimal. Uh, so we would suggest um, or say to you all that you can move forward with implementing those shifts with the standards this year. Next slide. We're getting ready to get into resources, and as I mentioned, we're going to have some time for questions, but please don't, uh, don't feel afraid to ask questions now in the chat box if you like. We are working very hard with colleagues in the state as well, um, curriculum coordinators and other teachers to develop resources as quickly as we can, but we have several resources we wanted to share with you. Uh, and they're available or linked in this slide deck as well. The first is uh, one of the big questions we get is about are the Oklahoma curriculum frameworks for science going to be updated? And the answer is yes, but that will really happen in the 20, throughout the 2020-21 school year. One thing we are working on this summer is some guidance specifically for uh, bundling in sixth grade and possibly seventh grade for those teachers and school districts that may be moving forward with implementing uh, the shifts in the standards. Uh, so we'll have sort of a supplemental document to the Oklahoma curriculum frameworks for those two grade levels in particular, but a full expansion of the full of the full curriculum frameworks will be ongoing this next year uh, and Donna and Heather will be leading that process. Uh, so we may be calling on a few of you to help or support with that work. Next. We will be updating the OKSI OK, OK PD on your plan modules. If you haven't seen those before, you can link to them here in the slide deck. Uh, the reason we say updating those is because um, there are some aspects of those PD on your plan modules that uh, we believe could have some added resources um, provided. But if you take a look at those PD on your plan modules, they really help a teacher uh, better understand the three dimensions of science that are embedded in the science standards document. Additionally, we'll be updating um, the science webpage for three-dimensional learning with new resources this summer, but there are several great resources available in, on the existing page, which you can link to here. And lastly, for the 2020-21 school year, we'll be working on an introductory virtual course to the standards and the three dimensions of learning that are embedded in those standards. 
And next, I believe Susan's going to share with us a little bit about our middle school efforts. Yes. Um, so as we have all noted throughout this presentation, we know that the placement is changed for middle school standards. Therefore, uh, we will actually provide um, some specific training and some specific direct guidance for middle school teachers to make sure that those gaps in learning are filled for our students. Um, we would encourage all middle school teachers to attend um, net this week's virtual meeting, which June 11th at 10 a.m. to 11.30. We would love to have all of you there. That meeting will directly address all of the middle school standards placements. Um, also, if you have any questions about that, you can email Heather to answer any questions. Um, we will help middle school teachers identify specific resources for instruction. Um, this summer, we will um, especially work with our sixth grade teachers as they will move forward with the full implementation this next school year. Um, and for middle school resources, we will be providing a summer opportunity for middle school teachers to attend a training on free and open instructional materials offered by Open Syed. Um, this is a five-day virtual training experience. Um, it is two hours the first day and it is four hours the following four days. Um, and we have a break in between, so we do three days and then a weekend break and two days. Um, but uh, that will be some asynchronous working um, on, the, on the weekend some and synchronous working together. Um, I highly encourage each of you to watch the video that is linked here where it says Open Syed. Um, this video was produced by our State Department of Education and it's highlighting um, the pilot program from Oklahoma. Um, also, we encourage all middle school teachers to apply. Your applications are due June 12th. Um, so for some additional resources, I think Heather's going to talk to us about high school. Yes. Or all grades. Yes, yeah. lots of grades. Yeah. Um, so this summer, um, OK, the Engage OK is virtual. Um, and so we did want to tell you when the science session was going to be held. Um, there is limited seating. So please pre-register uh, so that you can ensure that you get a spot in that. Um, and that one is in July on the 17th. Um, next slide, please. Okay. And then we do want to keep up with our bi-monthly virtual meetings. Um, in May, everyone said it was okay to continue doing Fridays at three, but now that we're in the summer mode, we want to make sure that's still the best time to meet with teachers. Um, so towards the end, there was going to be a survey um, that you can kind of select wood mornings or afternoons and what particular days might be better suited. But right now we do plan for our next one to be on June 19th um, at three o'clock. Uh, these virtual meetings, they will be announced through the science newsletter. And so if you have not signed up for that, you can click on that link there to sign up um, to be able to get all of those resources as well, and I'll make sure to put that link in the chat box also. Um, if you ever have any questions about that, please feel free to email me and I can send you the link that way too. All right, back to Tiffany. Yeah, so in the next couple of slides, we'll round out our resources as uh, Susan moves to that. So you may be familiar that the State Department of Education released uh, the Return to Learn uh, guidance or framework for schools last week. We wanted to point out that uh, general guidance for instructional planning is provided in this document. Um, specific guidance and resources are available starting on page 36 uh, for science, as I mentioned. Um, one of the documents you'll find in there is our PD on your plan module. Um, that was very popular during uh, uh, the um, implementation of the 2014 standards. And um, that document helps you look at the disciplinary core ideas or concepts for your grade level. And then you can make um, little cards out of those disciplinary core ideas and you can then uh, lay them out so you can determine 
um, how you want to conduct your scope and sequence for the year. So that particular document is linked in that return to learn guidance. We will also be providing an updated version of that document, at least in style and a little bit of language through the science newsletter a little later uh, this week. And if I can get uh, to it in just a moment, we'll add it in the chat box for you as well. So there, there's tons of resources that um, we are working on and working with, with teachers in the state to work on over the summer, but we have a little time, and I, I know you will complete a survey in a moment uh, that we'll ask you to complete to help us understand uh, if the information and some of the documents that have been produced are helpful to you. But now sort of your time to ask questions or uh, share with us either in the chat box uh, or you can unmute if you like. Uh, is there something else in the way of a resource that you think would be valuable specifically over the summertime that we might think about or look at? So I'm going to prompt you with that and then uh, we'll see what comes up in the chat box and I'll pause in a moment and see if anyone wants to unmute and speak. Um, but keep in mind, in addition to um, thinking about support structures for implementing new standards in general and some of those shifts. Some of the other resources we'll be working on this summer for science are um, resource documents to help teachers think about science in a blended learning format and science in a distance learning format. So just as you have several things to think about for the upcoming school year with some of the unique um, challenges that, that we may be encountering. We too at the State Department are very mindful of that and considering that. So in addition to the standards implementation resources, we will be providing those resources to help you think about um, things like science instruction in a blended learning environment or in a distance learning environment. So yes, gonna, I have yeah, go ahead, Debbie. Okay. Um, I think you followed a, a conversation that I was involved in with other teachers about a week ago where we were discussing just what are the things that we need to be changing um, of our normal business mode when we start back to school once, one, I mean, I know each district's probably gonna have some, some instruction, but like I wanna know from somebody besides just me thinking about it, what, what should we do and not do with this COVID-19, what is safe, what's not safe? I mean, I'm, you know, I, I don't, I need some guidance. And I mean, I, I know a few things that I'm gonna change, but I, I really kind of wish we had a a, 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 a a list of things that we want might wanna think about. Yeah, so I think, um, Debbie, if you haven't taken a look at this return to learn, uh, framework and specifically the operations section. There's a lot of guidance for schools related to operation. Now, something to keep in mind is that we at the State Department recognize that every district is unique and every community is unique in what they may be dealing with uh, at different points in the year related to COVID. For example, we had some counties that never experienced a case during this time period. So the way that they operate may look different than a county that encounters several cases. So the framework is, is really intended to provide sort of that high level um, guidance to schools and districts related to safety and operations. But really, Debbie, what happens at your at your local district, they, I've been on calls with many of the superintendents in the state. They are currently working with teams to develop a local plan um, to share with teachers and to share with uh, their community. So I think um, certainly look at that operations part of the return to learn Oklahoma guidance, but also just know that I, I know administrations all across the state are trying to develop their local plans based on some of that framework and that guidance. One thing we will be providing in the coming, uh, in, in the coming weeks, and we are actually working with uh, a few other groups to think about this, um, but it's related to that guidance for safety with laboratory. And so yeah. that is something we are going to address that is not currently in the Return to Learn Oklahoma guidance, uh, but we are working on that. When can we expect that, Tiffany? No, I, I like to say it, we're working on it as quickly as, as we can. And as you can imagine, with, um, with some of the guidance changing, uh, the, the, you know, as we learn more about this particular virus, I think some of the guidance is changing. So we're trying to be responsive to that. Um, but also just thinking about laboratory safety in general, which is another layer 
uh, for laboratory experiences. So um, I can't give you a firm date, but I, am, I can tell you that we are working on that. And um, I, I will say that the goal is to have it um, completed and finalized by Engage OK. Just recognize that there may need to be some adjustments even after that, depending on the, guide, the health and safety guidance we receive. Yeah, that was something that um, my department at Deer Creek was also, uh, we've just been in constant uh, conversations about is like our, our journals are all stored in buckets and all of their journals are together and we're limited on our laboratory equipment. So everybody's having to share laboratory equipment. So what is that going to look like? And just how, how do we go about restructuring our classrooms without losing that um, that hands-on and that 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 connection with them actually being able to do things. So um, sure. hopefully what you're going to push out will address some of those things as well. Yeah, and I think keeping in mind that um, I, I have always considered the goal, as I'm sure many of you all do and, and, and what you were speaking to, it, it really is kind of about that minds on experience. So I think a lot of times when we say hands on, we're, we mean that engagement piece for students where they really get to investigate something. And so in some cases um, throughout the school year, uh, maybe um, the hands on approach turns into, I've heard some teachers say, well, for some of the, the investigations, I might end up doing a demonstration and then having a really robust discussion with students and allowing them to um, share what they're thinking and they're wondering. Those are some ways that teachers are already thinking about adjusting, uh, but I think keep in mind you always want to go with what your district is guiding you for safety because we can't be in, in, in the multitude of classrooms in 540 districts to know what you um, what your unique classroom looks like, the number of students you have, uh, or even what's going on in your community at that time. So always go to your district policy first, but we hope to provide specifically for that laboratory guidance, just something to help uh, districts and teachers um, use to think through their policies for next year and the way that they might approach that. Yeah, and Debbie, I see your question. Uh, I want guidance for how we, how we will change our classroom uh, procedures. Um, I think you're talking about that, that operational part, distancing and those sort of things. All right, great questions. What, what else is something, um, if you got to dream big about what would be uh, something exciting and doable this summer that we worked on uh, that might be helpful? So Morgan has asked about opportunities for the next, to, to bring people together to talk um, about the next uh, Gen Storylines. Um, with Heather as our, our new director and then Susan and Donna as our science specialist and our science teams, I think that is something that can be looked at. Keep in mind the, the middle school workshops that Susan mentioned, those free and uh, open curricular units for that workshop will be on Storylines, but there are also Storyline free and open units available for high school uh, for biology right now, which we should put a link to that in the resources. We'll get that in the slide deck. That was an error on my part. Um, but there, there's a full course available for, around storylines, free and open curricular units through the University of Colorado. And chemistry should be finished soon. Um, and then I believe, Morgan, what, you, what you're also talking about, there are a set of free and open units around storylines that are for elementary, middle school, and high school that would be available. Uh, so I think we could certainly look into that for folks that um, uh, are not in middle school and attending that, those summer workshops. But uh, that's a great request and we'll think about that and see how we can address it. Any other questions or just asks, uh, you know, for what we can do to better support you in this time period? Hey, Tiffany, will we be able to get a copy of this um, PowerPoint that you presented from with all the links in it? So we'll have all the links in one document. Yeah, so we can put a link to it in the chat right now. Um, I think that uh, was shared a little earlier. But it was, yeah, and I missed it. Yeah. Okay, but one of the things we're also going to do is um, 
place all of the information in the upcoming newsletter with a link oh, to perfect. a single, single document like an agenda so that you can have the agenda and the presentation. And if you wanted to go through that with your own teachers, you would be able to do that with those resources. So that was going to be my next question. If I could um, pirate some of your information for my teachers uh, for our July sessions. Yes, as long, Maudine, as um, you don't make changes and then say the State Department said. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> and there was a question from uh, Dina about, will the newsletter start sharing some virtual lab information? We began to do a little bit of that through distance learning, but I think that highlighting some of those examples in future newsletters would be uh, good. So that's a really good request to make. And it looks like Donna has added the uh, Colorado biology uh, units, those free and open units uh, in the chat box. And again, we'll get a slide in the slide deck that also shares those resources as well. Uh, and Amanda, that is a great question. So Amanda has asked if there will be a pacing um, guide or progression suggestion document somewhere for biology. That's actually part of what we uh, are looking at working on for the expansion of the curriculum frameworks this year. So if you're familiar with the math curriculum frameworks, for every grade level uh, and course in high school, they provide a progressions um, document that serves as like a scope and sequence, an example scope and sequence. So that's some of the work we'll be doing in the expansion part of the curriculum frameworks. I don't anticipate with everything else that we'll be working on this summer, we'll be able to get that uh, finalized before the start of the school year, but it will be happening throughout, uh, the development of those will be happening through the school year. And uh, Jackie asked, is there a survey uh, to complete? Yes, Jackie, there is. And I'm sure one of our colleagues will put a link in the chat box. Um, it's also linked on the slide deck, so you can access it there. And Tina, 6ESS2-1, do you mind messaging either Heather um, uh, directly with your email address or Susan or Donna so that we can get you a response uh, related specifically to 6ESS2-1? And the way that you message them is just by clicking on the right box uh, in the chat area or the down arrow on the little blue box that says uh, everyone. Uh, and you can find their name and message them directly. Or Heather, do you mind putting your email in the chat box as well? Great. Wonderful questions today. Thank you for your asks. We are going to stay on the line in case you have some other questions, but for everyone else, just know, please complete the survey today. That will help us out. And for those of you interested in a more guidance and support for middle school transitions, join us Thursday at 10 o'clock for that webinar. And then please continue to join throughout the summer um, this community of educators that will be working together to support one another again for the school year next year. Um, so thank you so much. This video will be recorded and available to you as well as um, all of the resources that have been shared. And we're gonna stay on in case you have, again, specific questions you'd like to ask, but for everyone else, you're welcome uh, to exit whenever you choose. Thank you so much. All right, and, and Theresa, if, if you're on, I think we can get to your question. Yeah, I'm here. Um, there is an earth science course code for high school. So is it, the way the standards are written, is it, so are those standards just to earth science or is it space in earth science? Or? Yeah, it, it kind of is that. Because that's what, I mean, when we look at like an online platform and they offer the courses, you know, there's not an astronomy course or geology course, but there is an earth and space, you know, course directed to those standards. 
And so I was just curious if the state would give us like a course code for like Earth and space. I also like the idea that it's standards driven. Yeah, so here's what I would recommend the reset. On the local transcript, you can um, state on the transcript that it's Earth and Space Science, so that shows up for the college, for college admissions and those sort of things. But the actual course code you would use is the Earth, Earth Science course code that's available. So Earth Science. Yes, ma'am. Tiffany, this is Susan O'Dell from Union. Hi, Susan. Um, I was wondering if the textbook companies had reached out to you all or if you had been having any discussions with them with the slow rollout method. What, because this is a textbook adoption year, so I'm like, what's going to happen with textbooks being able to manage resourcing all the different grades? Yes, so they're, they're actually, they've already begun that work, Susan. So. Um, the textbook adoption process is this year, and what that means is the vendors will all present their textbooks or instructional materials to the textbook committee starting in July, and then the review will happen for those uh, materials by the textbook committee all the way through November. And in November, the committee will develop a list of materials, and then next uh, July 1, school districts can use their state textbook funds to purchase from those lists. The, the textbook companies have been in contact with us since February. So when the standards came out and were approved by, by the State Board of Education, they began to look at those to make determinations about what shifts they needed to make. We actually have several vendors who will be bidding more than the last time um, that we had uh, textbook adoption. And they've been very responsive and have asked a ton of questions about the shifts in the standards. And, um, uh, and so we anticipate to have a robust textbook uh, adoption process this year. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Great. We still have a few people on. Any other questions that we can I have, help? A, I have yeah. another question, but it's totally unrelated. So <laughs> I don't know if you want me to go there or just email you. But um, if we put in for a State Department committee and then we never hear anything back, are we just to assume that we weren't selected for that committee? Or is there some kind of a process where you get kind of a thanks for your submission, we will keep you in mind for future projects or something just so that we know that like we were definitely not in it. I just don't want to miss an email or something and then I miss totally an agree. opportunity. Yeah, we, we do try to send those communications out, but let me um, request, uh, let me just check in with your particular question um, with the committee that you had asked about. Just okay. to ensure that there wasn't a, a, lot, a drop in communication there or uh, an email went to, you know, junk mail, which sometimes happens. 